Um, I'm just going to take the next few minutes to do God's, give us God's word to us. I mean, it's, it's a new year and God has given us a word. He said this year is our year of God's revealing glory. Um, and I was sharing with them when we were praying this morning. I said to them, glory is weighty. Glory is not just something that um, comes on you and you still remain the same. Glory must shake you. It's weighty. So when God's glory comes on you, when God's glory is revealed through you, it shows everyone we know that, ah, this one has been with the Lord. When Moses went to pray in the mountain and he was there for 40 days and 40 nights, he experienced God's glory. And by the time he was coming back, the Bible says his face was radiating. Light shone through his face. The children of Israel could not look at him. They had to tell him to put a veil over his face. So glory is weighty. So it means that if you want to experience God's glory this year, you are asking for a weighty matter. God will give you. But the question is, do you have the capacity? Amen. And so Pastor Kemi took us to the first um, stage last week when she was talking about you cannot put a new wine in an old wine skin. Why? Because the old wine skin will do what? It will burst. You cannot carry it. So what God has destined for us this new year, in this new season, if you still maintain your old nature, I beg to defy you won't be able to carry it. Praise God. So what we are dealing with here is very sensitive. Glory is a weighty matter. And so if God wants to radiate through you, a lot has to go through you. For you to break through, you must pass through. It's not going to be easy. And one of the things you must understand that if you want to experience God's glory, there must be an intimacy with him. He's not going to jump on you. Like when some people see some man of God doing great things, they'll say, ah, sir, lay hands on me so that they anoint you. Is it by this? Is it by little hands? There's a walk. If not, Elijah would have just laid hands on Elijah and say, collect the mantle. But there was a walk. And even at that walk, you have to also be very sensitive because he told Elijah, if you, are, if you see me, praise God. So this morning, my team is taking root in God. Pastor Kemi talked about the new wine last week. So I'm going to be talking about taking root in God. And you know, I, I try to understand why God, I've listened to some messages and I've, I've tried to understand why God always refers, he's always talking about seed, plants. How many of us have ever been worried about it? Almost everything that has to do with the kingdom is either you sow, that a plant. It's always agriculture. So God and agriculture have some simplified parts. That's the mind of God. Because when a plant it explains a lot of things about life. It explains a lot of things about nature. And so that's why God is always quick to refer to, oh, like this, like this, like this, like this. So the first scripture I want to look at, first of all, please help me. John 15, 4. Let me start with this. And I pray I have time to be able to do justice to this. John 15, 4. Abide in me. Who is speaking? Jesus. Abide in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So the first instruction, please let me say this, for you to experience God's unveiling glory, you must be ready to take instructions. There is no miracle that comes without instruction. When the woman went to meet the prophet to say, ah, they've taken my son, so uh, they, are, they, they are about to take my son so my husband is dead though. What did he ask her? He said, what do you have in your house? She said, she has a little pot of oil. And he said, go and do what? Borrow vessels. For you to experience the unveiling glory of God, instructions will always follow. So this year, more than ever before, your life must be guided by instruction. You cannot 
Jesus the Lord as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him this same word here walk is the same way the Bible says and Abraham walked with God so the walking is not just walking it means that you and God are doing things that has to do for the, that has to do with advancement of the what the kingdom for your own growth and for the advancement of the kingdom and the truth be told, if you don't walk with God, you cannot excel. Check everyone that walked with God, what their life was like. So he said, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. God. As you therefore, God, rooted, that's my emphasis, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. The first thing I want to stress there is the word rooted. In your walk with God, you must be what? Rooted. You can't just be shallow. You must be rooted and established. The reason why we have a lot of madness in Christianity today is because we have a lot of people who are not rooted. That's why somebody can say if you're a football star, you go to a fire. If you are using iPhone, you go to a fire. If you bab your hair, you go to a fire. If you eat into me or take vitamin C, you go to a fire. Why? Because the person is not rooted and built up in him. And if you see those sermons, it will be hair fire, hair fire, hair fire. No mercy of God. No mercy of God. What kind of gospel is that? No love of God. It's all hell, 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 hell. That's an ambassador of hair fire. I was telling someone, maybe they paid this one to sponsor hair. It's like we have been depopulating hell, so somebody has to rise up to come and be sponsoring hair fire. That's how the message is. Hell, 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 hell. If you wear jeans, jeans is antichrist. Yeah. so many things that they were just saying praise God rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving Eight. beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceits that's what is going on now I'm just wondering the people that are sitting under that congregation father help them Philosophy and empty according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Let me shake some tables. You know, I don't understand how somebody will be in the world before, and the devil will tell you that you are number two. You say, I was number two. I was second in command. Do you know how many people have been number two to the devil? They call somebody the father of all liars. You are believing him. Have you ever reasoned it? All of them are always number two. I was second in command to the devil. I was the one in this. I was the one in this. So devil, the father of all liars is telling you you are number two and you are believing you are number two. 
Because they don't read. Because they read their Bible, they would have said, I have been deceived. Empty. So the Bible is saying that we must be rooted so that we will not be tossed up and down with philosophies. We won't be tossed, about, tossed up and down with messages that are not scripture based. And so God is asking us in the year 2022 for you to express his unveiling glory. You must be rooted. And that's why this church is a world church. We don't use the word to play. Even when we want to pray, we pray the word. Because if you miss, and let me say this to us, the word you receive here is not enough to sustain you. It can't sustain you. Let me use that word. It can't. You must go search for the word yourself. That's what will build you up. That's what will establish you. This will only enhance and propel and trigger things inside of you to become more worded and rooted. So this is like a catalyst. Every time you come to the presence of God, this just triggers and you are the hunger just stirs up and all that. So if you rely on your pastor's message every Sunday, you are doomed. You find God for yourself. It's true. No, I'm not ready to spend anything. Let me telling you now. So those of us that are Sunday, Sunday Christians, God will help us. We are work in progress. So I'm not judging you. We are coming up. And I took time to look at some things. And I was looking at a, I went online to search and I was looking at two, two plants. Uh, there's what you call the broom tree. And there's, um, I think it's acacia or so. Acacia plant. Acacia plant. Then there's what you call the eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. Don't, don't worry, forgive me. I'm not Pastor Kemi. So, anywhere I just pronounce it, just understand. Eucalyptus, okay. It's not my father's language. Don't disturb me. Praise God. Now, we're going to look at those two plants. Now, if you see, let's look at the first one. The acacia plant takes time when it wants to establish. From research, the roots gets to 200 feet to the ground. Two hundred. I mean, I mean, picture it in your head. 200 feet to the ground. Any root that gets to 200 feet in the ground, nothing can shake it. It cannot be moved. I mean, 200 feet is long. It's deep. But the eucalyptus. Abby? I'm going to give us some little characteristics. Most of the time, its roots are surface. And I was reading something on this particular plant. It says it grows very fast. It can grow as fast as 60 feet in height and 20 feet in width within 8 years. But the broom tree or the acacia grows like 20 to 30 years. It takes time. I mean, that's a whole lot. But they are both what? Trees. Let's look at the scripture. Matthew 13. Matthew 13 verse 5 Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth and look how the Bible says and they immediately did what? sprang up because they had no depth of earth and God began to say to me when you see people quickly come out that are not rooted. This is what the scripture is talking about. They touch the ground. Just small soil. Small. Small soil. Oh. They just jump up. Boom. But when you look at this. Next scripture. But 
when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no roof, they withered away. Let me say this to us. In our walk with God, there is a depth that God requires of us. I was looking at the roots and I was listening to messages on the roots. Have you observed that the roots most of the time is always in a dark place? Have you observed why when they are doing planting they put things in black nylon? Why is it not transparent nylon? Because the best of the roots is in the secret place. A lot of us are too eager to experience the lights. Lamb light can kill you before your time, oh. Lamb light can kill and destroy. But everyone that has spent time in the secret place shall abide under what? The shadow. Not on his own light. Under the shadow of who? Then you will not take glory. Because you know that it's God that is making me who I am. You will be under the shadow. You won't be looking for spotlights. The Bible says that those who are not rooted, they spring up quickly. That's the same way this plant is. It grows fast. In fact, any stem that you see is bigger than the root, that stem, that plant cannot last. Easily just shoots, boom. And that's how we see a lot of Christians. People are just coming out from our play, left, right, center. We cannot, we don't know where they are. Pew, we just see them, they just appear. Watch out, those who fade out. What are they looking for? The light. Let me appear. I think one day myself and Pastor Fee were sharing. I said, Do you know how dangerous it is to be on spotlight? Even though God said we should be the light, we should not hide our light. But you allow God to put you in the light, not to carry yourself to the light. Spotlight can ruin you. Because if you are not prepared for the spotlight, do you know what it means to handle fame? If you have not been built up to take offenses, if you have not been built up, to handle what people say. If you have not been built up in focus, you now enter the lamb light. Somebody now say one thing about you, you reply the person. That's why you see a lot of idiots on Instagram. When they just say one thing, they just fire back. Piam. A lot. And they will say they are celebrity. They will last. Because God trains you for David to be anointed king at age 13 or 17. God did not put him in the throne. God had to still take him through the process. It took over 13 years before he was even anointed king. Because if he had gone to that position, at that time he would mess up. God wanted it to be established. God wanted it to be rooted. I know one of the characteristics of this plant. Forgive me, this eucalyptus. Eucalyptus or eucalyptus, whatever it is, just are you. It has a good fragrance. It smells lovely. It has a good shade. Now, like it's a desert, it's like a desert um, plant. You know, the truth about it is that most times God wants you to be in an unforgiving place. Some environments that are hot, hot and harsh. You know why? Because he wants to bring out the best in you. I've passed that stage of my life where I start complaining, God, why me? Why not you? If not you, who should he be? Because God makes the best of men. Oh, there's a scripture I love. I've had that scripture for years. It's one of my favorite scriptures from school days. Psalm 66 verse 12. The Bible says he has allowed men ride over my head. 
Ah, Kayadaba. He has allowed me to pass through fire. But fire will not burn me. He has allowed me to pass through water. Water won't drown me. Because he's bringing me to an, a place of abundance. He allowed me to pass through fire. Why? He wanted me to have the fire experience. But he assured me I won't get burnt. There's a scripture in Malachi. He said he sits as a refiner. He sits. He's a silversmith watching. Passing the silver through the fire. Let me tell you the truth. The way that silver can be declared pure is when the silversmith can see himself in the silver. Until God can see himself in you, he won't take you out of that fire. So you are complaining. God, why me? Why me? Why am I passing through this? Why am I this? He has to, he has to be you so that God can see himself. God wants to see that you will get to that point in the midst of crisis. All you can open your mouth and say is thank you Jesus. Not complain. Everything is knocking you off here and there. God is like, oh God, did it, did it. your own is a Lord, we thank you because we know that you make all things good. Someone say when you press a cockroach, what comes out of the cockroach? Is what's inside the cockroach. Blood can't come out because blood is not in the cockroach. So when crisis face you, when crisis hits you, what will come out of you is the word of God that you have stored inside of you. Some of us, when we have one ailment or the other, the first thing we want to respond is doctor. All our healing scripture, we forget it. We don't know. That's if we won't have any. Am I saying doctors are not good? They are very good. Because you will, you will need faith to take the drugs. But your first response should be the word. Your first response should be the word. This particular tree smells good. So it can attract. People come on that, take shade. But do you know that this tree is very dangerous? And when I was reading about it, they said, a small rain that we fall can make this tree destroy places. There was a research of a particular place, I think Toxin, Toxin, somewhere, I don't know, it's in the U.S., the people in that particular place, they wanted to make their environment look like um, an oasis. They went to plant this particular tree. And as they planted it over the years, I think for a while they have not had rain, but rain now fell. You know what this tree did? It destroyed every... In fact, all their sewage, all their water supply, it destroyed it. So when you see people who are quick to grow with shallow roots, there's a danger. When anything happens to them, adversity, adversity comes. Pew, all of you that are within them, you will, you will follow. Things that are good around them will be destroyed. Why? Because they don't have a solid root. Destroy fences. Destroy, destroy properties. And when they fall, now there's even something that I read about it. Most times, honey, uh, bees, they stay in them. They have their colonies in this particular plant. Because it smells nice. The fragrance is good. So you attract them. And you know what bees can do? Imagine when you have those kind of this and the rain for every the kind of bees that will be in that environment. So what God is saying to us this year, let's be rooted. Let's spend more time. Let's not be eager to jump out. Let's not look for the fame. Let's not look for the glamour. Let's not look for no. Because you receive one revelation from God now, you just think that you have arrived. You just go to Instagram and the Lord said. Just one revelation. People that have received receiving revelation in their secret place, they've not come out to you one. And after that revelation, we'll not hear anything again. The next thing you now start talking of your own self, of your own accord. In fact, when you receive some rema, keep it to yourself. Let the, let the rema work in your life. Let it work. Let it grow. Use it. When you see, you don't have a right to be telling people set it. I don't say some things because I've not seen the result in my life. So I will be quiet. Until I begin to see it and I begin to, ah, okay, this is what and what God showed me to do. If the result has not come, I will keep quiet. The one I know I have result for, I can tell you categorically, I will say it. With all boldness and confidence, I am not ashamed of it. 
When you have not experienced some dimensions, don't open your mouth and start talking. Because what people are looking for is the result. And that's why you see the unveiling glory of God revealed through us. And that can only come based on our intimacy, our being rooted in the word. So you can't shy from it. Let Pastor Adeboye, um, Bishop, uh, uh, um, it all of them gather together, lay hands on you. Say, ah, you, you will receive it. Baba, if you don't walk the walk, nothing will come on you. It doesn't jump like that. The same way they have laid hands on you, you will receive it too. But also 10 times the persecution they have received, 10 times the adversity that has troubled them will come your way. You know, we don't want to hear those parts. We just want the glamour. I think he was speaking, I was saying one time, someone came to beat him and said, ah, sir, lay hands on me. The grace upon your life. I just love it. I mean, and I want to just tap into it. And he said, ah, you will receive it in Jesus' name. All the businesses I've lost, you will receive it in Jesus' name. All the troubles have come. Ah. The guy changed his mind. But the truth is, you cannot break through if you don't pass through. You can't. So what's God's word to us? That we be rooted and grounded. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Verse 7. Blessed is the man. Everybody look at this. Blessed is the man. Who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. I found out one of the things that God will want us to do this year is to trust him more than ever before. He doesn't want an alternative. I mean, we must get to that point where we must completely trust him. If you want God to move in your life, you must completely trust him. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 3, Trust in the Lord with all. With all. It is a sum. All. Your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. So the Bible says, blessed is this man. He's already blessed for doing what? Trusting in the Lord. And whose hope is the Lord? Verse 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. We spread out his roots by the river. I will not fear when heat comes. The reason why I will not fear when heat comes is because he's rooted. The reason why we panic is because we are not rooted. The reason why we shake in our faith is because we are not rooted. The moment we get rooted, when heat comes, we can withstand it. When adversity comes, we can withstand it. And that's why this year, more than ever before, please don't play with the word. Don't joke with it. Even if it's just one scripture, you meditate on day and night. The Bible was saying in the book of Joshua 1, this book shall I, this book of the Lord shall not depart from my mouth. I shall meditate on it day and night. And I shall observe to do all that is written in it. Then what will happen? Then. So the way your success will come is when you have finished meditating and doing, observing to do. May you be prosperous and have good sources. So there's a part of any faith or gospel that preaches that is only God that can do it for you. That's an irresponsible faith. Because God needs you to participate in it. God will do it. What will you do? God will do it. What will you do? God is in the business of partnership. He's not a sole proprietorship. He can do it. All by himself. But he wants you to partake of it. So you must build your faith. Build your word builds. Build your prayer life. You know, I always used to use this to joke. Where God wants to help you sometimes. So that you know where you are coming. It's the time when you have issues and you try to call your pastor that your pastor's life will not go through. Eh? you will not say oh there's this other brother that prays fervently you will call the number the number will not go through 
then you will now know that you are on your own. You know, I used to tell people, prayer is an investment too. <laughs> when the time comes, you will know that, ah, God, I need you. Only you will pray. Have you not noticed that most of our fathers and mothers is at this old age they are going to the mountain? When they were supposed to be using their life to go to the mountain, since they did not go. Life is teaching them now. They are not going at old age. In that they are strength and old age, they are climbing mountain. Oluwa, 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 Oluwa. Oluwa that they should have been calling since they did not call when they were young. It's now that they are old. Oluwa, Oluwa, Oluwa. Shaking head like a gamma lizard. Of course, you know your mountain can be anywhere. Your room can be your mountain. You know, we should stop getting too religious to enter into some places that that feel like, oh, that's where God is. God is everywhere. Jesus was saying to the man in the world, one time you will stop going to this uh, mountain. All this just I are running to see God. <laughs> you say, now we have, he's here. Am I saying going to seclude yourself? To, no, it's not bad though. It's good though. But don't make a... You know why God has so helped us? We are very religious. Hi. I now I understood why I now understood why they were, God had to bury Moses' body. I understood now. Because what the children of Israel did in the wilderness, any little thing they are ready to worship. So if that body of Moses was found, they would have created a, an altar and started worshipping Moses. Do you know that it was King Ezekiah that destroyed that brass that was created when the snake was biting them in the wilderness. How many of us remember that story? That thing, they were worshipping it. The children of Israel, very terrible people. As close as they were to God. That's why the Bible said, Moses, how did the scripture put it? Moses sought his ways. Why the children of Israel looked after his at. They were about his miracles. Moses was about God's ways. Let us be about God's ways this year. Please, let's stay rooted. I want to encourage us. Even if it's five minutes, take it out. Take it out. Spend in the world. Don't be in a hurry to want to blow because you'll be blown away. Be eager to be rooted. God is interested in your depths. God is interested in your depths. God is interested in your depths. I want to encourage us. Like the tree that is planted by the riverside. That's who we should be. Long for the water. The water is the word also. Long for it. Daily. We're not saying start and read all the... Mm, start gradually. You will get there. And God will help us in Jesus' name. How many of us have been blessed today? Let's just say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. We ask, oh God, that your word will abide in us. And we also will abide in the word. That we will be rooted and grounded in this word. We refuse to be shallow Christians. We refuse to be shallow believers. We want to spend time with your word. So we pray for the grace to be able to stay in the word and grow in the word. Thank you, Father, that this word that has fallen will fall on good ground. That will take root. It won't be on the, sol on the rocky ground where it will be quick to spring up. No. And it will bring forth its fruit a hundred, sixty, hundred fold in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.